Let's head into the newscast with the latest coming in on India and Sri Lanka as Sri Lanka is now facing the heat at the United Nations Human Rights Council over human rights violations during the civil war with Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam or the LTTE. And just ahead of a crucial vote at the UNHRC, the Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry has claimed that India has assured it will protect the territorial sovereignty of the island nation. The update comes from Sri Lankan Media Reports, which quoted Foreign Secretary Jayanath Kalambaj saying, and I quote, India has vowed to upkeep Sri Lanka's territorial sovereignty as the country's closest neighbour. It's important to note that Colombo further added that Sri Lanka requires the support from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Nepal against the UN resolution. But at present, India continues to maintain a neutral approach in contradiction to what the Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry is claiming. According to Sri Lankan Foreign Secretary, the elections in Tamil Nadu in April can be seen as a reason for India's current stance. Last week, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa had reached out to India seeking support at the UNHRC. Sri Lanka is expecting India to extend its support at this crucial juncture. Now, a resolution against Sri Lanka is backed by Canada and the UK. And according to the United Nations, 40,000 ethnic Tamils were killed in Sri Lanka by May of 2009. Among the 40 countries that have co-sponsored the resolution against Sri Lanka, only 12 countries are vested with voting power. Matters related to Sri Lanka have been raised several times at the 46th session of the UNHRC, which is underway and will continue till March 23rd. Voting will take place on March 22nd and 23rd on a resolution against Sri Lanka at the Human Rights Council. Let's quickly get in a sense of perspective in terms of the current developments between India and Sri Lanka. For that, I'm joined in by our eminent guest, Mr. Harshvardhan Pant, who's a distinguished fellow and head of ORS Strategic Studies. He's joining us live from New Delhi. Thank you so much, Mr. Pant, for joining our newscast today. Now, how tricky is it going to be for India to back Sri Lanka given our steady engagement despite the cancellation of projects like the East Container Terminal in Colombo Port and the growing Chinese support in the region? Well, you know, neighborhood uh, is always tricky. Neighbor in, in the neighborhood, you always have to make decisions based on multiple variables. And in, uh, and in Sri Lanka's case, of course, there has always been the domestic politics uh, of, uh, you know, of uh, t t uh, the Tamil issue hanging over it. So clearly, uh, whenever these kind of resolutions have come and whenever India has had to take a position, it has always been a difficult balancing act for India. Uh, and uh, therefore, you see a lot of back and forth happening between uh, the Sri Lankan government and India. And therefore, you see a lot of activity and almost uh, the, the statement by the Sri Lankan government, uh, by uh, Columbia, uh, re, the, the comment that you were mentioning earlier. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, in a sense, to preempt India's moves, to make it very clear that India stands with them, though India officially has not taken a position. Right. You know, there's also been a mention of the election in Tamil Nadu. How crucial is the Indian stance vis-a-vis -vis Indian Tamils and India's complex relationship with Sri Lanka? You know, it, it always plays a role. Uh, you, we have had uh, Tamil parties uh, in Tamil Nadu who will raise this issue. Uh, but India has been able to navigate that for a while. We have seen shifts where India has taken a broader a perspective and India's position, for example, on this issue has been quite categorical, that India's support rests on two pillars, uh, if you will. One, On the one hand, India wants that no one should, should be able to question uh, Sri Lanka's territorial integrity. That remains sacrosanct. On the other, the 13th Amendment, the, the fact that Tamil... Uh, Tamils need to be uh, in a part of the political process, given uh, equitable uh, and uh, and uh, you know reasonable assurance within the uh, constitutional framework. That remains a priority for India, and India has made those priorities uh, clear for a very long time, and they have been consistent part of India's outreach. So, in in the domestic uh, politics, uh, political landscape, political parties will raise that issue, and I think uh, for BJP. Uh, in particular, this will be this might be an issue uh, into into the campaign, and they are part of the AIADMK uh, coalition. So this this might become a bit tricky from mm. from that point of view. But I think uh, by and large, India has been able to make its uh, position very very consistent to right. Sri Lankans as well as to other stakeholders. Right. It's very interesting, Mr. Pant, that you mentioned the Thirteenth Amendment, which is something I'd like you to delve in further. Why is the full implementation of the Thirteenth Amendment from India Sri Lanka Accord crucial for India's relationship with Sri Lanka? Something which, of course, has also been reiterated by the Indian Prime Minister. 
yes if you recall indian um, mr modi became the first uh, prime minister to visit jaffna uh, you know and so there has been a messaging going on from india that while india is keen to improve the strategic ties with sri lanka it is imperative uh, that sri lanka brings the tamils into the constitutional framework of the 13th amendment and 13th, 13th amendment possibly is the only way forward whereby uh, uh, you know sri lanka can uh, can make its multicultural democracy work from india's perspective and give a uh, voice to those tamils who feel marginalized from the political mainstream we have we are witnessing a centralization of power and that centralization of power can only uh, lead to greater complexities for sri lanka itself and that has been a point that india has been trying to make that this is not simply about you know india taking the cause of tamils or or uh, you know that that because of our uh, ethnic linkages but this is also something that sri lanka need need to consider that it it has had it 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 has an opportunity now to reframe its engagement with tamils after the defeat of ltte and if it squanders that opportunity right. then uh, tomorrow other other crises may come and there in that in that context 13th amendment is very very critical its implementation is critical uh, so that tamils can have a voice in the larger constitutional framework of uh, sri lanka Absolutely, it has to be a reciprocal relationship with the neighbours. Having said that, thank you so much, Mr. Pant, for bringing in those precious inputs. The on is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.